Hello everyone, my name is Tony. I am the owner of Johor Gakini Block. It is a travel and food block. I travel to different places, uh, enjoy the, the views, the attractions, all the sights. And especially I love to try out the food. One of the favorite places that I've been to in the past 10 years is Jiangsu province. Today I want to share with you the good food that I experienced in Jiangsu province and I hope that you will also want to visit. Just like me, I want to be back in Jiangsu province again. Jiangsu is one of the 23 provinces of China. It is by the sea. It, it is on its east is the Yellow Sea and the East China Sea. And it has two rivers running through it. One of them is the famous Yangtze River. The other is the shorter. Yangtze River is one of the sorry, Yangtze River is the longest river in China. And then there is a shorter tributary known as the Huai River that runs through Jiangsu province. Jiangsu province's cuisine is one of the eight great cuisines of China. And then, further subdividing, subdividing, Jiangsu cuisine is considered the greatest four together with Sichuan cuisine, Guangdong cuisine, Shandong cuisine, and number four, one of the four is Jiangsu cuisine. Jiangsu province has 13 prefectures, and each prefecture has its own city. The capital city is Nanjing, and the other well known cities are Yangzhou, Suzhou. You also know Shanghai, of course. Shanghai was part of Jiangsu and it was separated, uh, made into a municipal municipality in 1927. But Shanghai cuisine is still often considered part of Jiangsu cuisine. I mentioned to you the geography of Jiangsu already. It is very well blessed with rivers. There are two great ones. The greatest of all, Yangtze River, is 6,000 kilometers long. Then there's Huai River, and then the sea. The sea uh, on its east. In the province itself, there's also lakes, many lakes. The biggest ones are Taihu Lake and Yangcheng Lake. Now, all these features, great plains, rivers, lakes, and the sea, um, contrib contributed many ingredients to Jiangsu cuisine. So you will see in Jiangsu cuisine many um, fish, prawns, seafood, and there's also duck and other waterfowl plus pork, of course. Now, um, before I go further, maybe I should just uh, tell you about some Jiangsu uh, cuisine. Now, um, you must have heard of Yangzhou Chao Fan, you know, Yangzhou Fried Rice. You must have heard of Dong Po Ro. You must have heard of Shanghai Heavy Crabs, the Little Lobsters, the Lion Head. Um, now, the characteristics of Jiangsu cuisine are its emphasis on its fresh ingredients. So the, you know, the fish that comes from the river, from the lakes, from the sea, the seafood, and the ducks, uh, all this waterfowl. The emphasis is on freshness. And the cooking techniques used are mainly steaming, simmering, double boiling, braising, stewing. The idea is to preserve and to enhance and to bring out the natural flavors of the ingredients. The texture of most Jiangsu cuisine are you know, tender, soft, but not mushy. And the idea is to 
enjoy the natural food as much as possible. Another important aspect of Jiangsu cuisine is the cutting skills. The very important to cut the food um, skillfully and it contributes to the texture and also the flavor of the dish. So Jiangsu dishes are mainly on the sweeter side, on the savory side. So you will not find many spicy dishes among Jiangsu cuisine and uh, you will not find many deep fried dishes in Jiangsu cuisine. Mm. Now let me give you some examples. You know in Beijing you have uh, Beijing roast duck. In Jiangsu you will find another duck. It is Jiangsu salted duck. Instead of roasting the duck in Jiangsu, in Nanjing, and then of course you find it all over Jiangsu itself, they will salt the duck, air dry it, and then they will boil and simmer it with some spices. Now, what you will get, which is very characteristic of Jiangsu cuisine, it is a very tender, juicy uh, piece of duck. A little bit savory, a bit salty, the skin has a bit of crunch, and uh, you don't, don't get much duck uh, gaminess. It's a delicious dish. Uh, I, I really love it a lot. So if you go to Jiangsu, and you should go to Jiangsu, uh, you can look out for Nanjing duck. You can't miss it. Uh, everywhere you turn, there will be Nanjing salted duck. Another dish um, which you probably have tried before is Tong Duo Rou. Now, um, Tong Poro is an important part of Jiangsu cuisine and it is now, you can find it in Chinese restaurants all over the world. Um, it is pork belly cut into cubes, um, quite a big piece, and then uh, still in soy sauce and a bit of spices. Now and then, when it is cooked, it is tender, you know, the, the meat is so soft. Soft but not mushy, it's a bit of chewiness, a bit of squeakiness. Then there is the fat, it's like melts in the mouth, and the skin. The skin has a little bit of glaze, not um, sugary glaze. It's because Jiangsu people like a bit of sweetness. So it's a balance of sweet, savory, and then natural taste of pork. Tong Po Rou. Mm, it's a must for you when you go to Jiangsu. Or if you're not in Jiangsu, if you're in a Chinese restaurant, order Tong Po Rou. Of course, everybody have heard of. Next one is Shanghai Harry Crabs. Everybody have heard of Shanghai Harry Crabs. The crabs come from the two great lakes of Jiangsu, Yangcheng Lake and Taihu Lake. The bears come from Yangcheng Lake. It's a smaller lake. Um, the best Harry Crabs in the world come from Yangcheng Lake, but most of us, like myself, don't have much chance to try that kind of very rare um, demand. is much greater than the supply. But we can get crabs from Taihu Lake. Taihu Lake is a much bigger lake and um, it is much more accessible and I, I really enjoy it. You know, just typical Jiangsu style, just clean the crab, it's just steam it. After that, you know, you pick out the meat from the little crustacean, pick out the little white flesh, dip it in a bit of vinegar and uh, julienne ginger and there you are. Just the natural sweetness of the crab. People uh, people go crazy over the roe and the gut. This is, has this umami and eggy taste. Another dish, if you go to Jiangsu, if you go to Shanghai, you will see little lobsters, restaurants of little lobsters everywhere. If you go to the market, you see people selling little lobsters. It's uh, Actually, it's a crayfish. Um, the crayfish they harvest from the, the the waterways, the rivers, the streams around Jiangsu. It is every corner you turn, you will see a uh, little lobster restaurants. Now, um, the, it's a little four, five inches, maybe six inches long. Most of it is the head. The biggest part of the lobster is the little lobster is just the head. So you take out the tail. And then uh, you just eat a little meat in the tail. Now it is cooked in different ways. The most popular I saw is something known as Si San Xiang. It is um, stew 
stew, cook, simmer, a little bit of fry in 13 different spices. Actually, it's more than 13, but they just call it the 13 spices. Si san siang. Um, the meat is like shrimp, it's like prawn, but a little bit softer. The taste is sweet, but not in the prawn kind of sweetness. It's a, it's his, it has its own flavor. So you, when you go to Jiangsu and Shanghai, or Shanghai, you look for this dish. You can't miss it. You would, you will be definitely tasting this little lobsters. The most famous Jiangsu dish, perhaps, is what? What do you think? It's Yangzhou Chao Fan. Every restaurant in the world you go to, you know, whether it's North America, Europe, Australia, Southeast Asia, Singapore, every restaurant has a every Chinese restaurant has a fried rice dish and more often than not, it is Yangzhou Chao Fan. Um, the dish comes from Yangzhou. Now, uh, the two main ingredients are rice, uh, kept overnight, and then egg yolk. The egg yolk is beaten, and the rice and egg yolk is fried together with a little bit of chopped um, prawn, carrot. The, the result is an eggy, sweet uh, rice. Um, fluffy, actually it's not, not greasy, a little bit fluffy and the rice is tender and uh, so it's full of eggy and eggy sweetness um, plus a little bit of caramel, caramelization, we, we call it wok hei, guo qi, just a little bit, not too much, a little bit. Then another dish, this is lion head. Nothing to do with uh, lion. No, 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 not, not eating lion. The it is actually a meatball, a pork ball to be to be specific. It is pork belly. Chop, 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 chop. Uh, as I said, in Jiangsu cuisine, chopping is very, very important. So chop, 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 chop. More than half of the meatball is fat, but but don't worry. Um, it does not feel greasy or fat. Or, so there are two ways of preparing lion head. It's a big, it's a, it's a big, it's a tennis ball. Uh, it can be smaller, but usually it's about a tennis ball size. You can either stew it, or you can cook it by boiling. Um, par boil it to about seventy to eighty percent, then double boil it in chicken soup. The, the wow, when you when you eat uh, lion head. It is soft, soft, and then uh, the meat you know, is tender, then the fat, the fat really melts in your mouth. It's like, it's just full of ju juices, sweet, savory, you know, it's a blend of layers of savoriness from the paw, from the chicken, lion head. Get your lion head. Anyway, uh, you may be curious why it's called lion head. It's pork, right? Why it's called lion head? The, it is named after those, you know, when you go to important Chinese buildings like banks, uh, temples, you will see guardian lions outside. If you look at the head, at the back of the head, it is a little bit rough. So they call this pork dish lion head because it looks like the, the head of a lion. Then there's Tai Hu San Pai. The three whites of Taihu. Taihu is very important because Taihu is the largest lake in Jiangsu province. Now, um, there's uh, white fish, white bait, and white prawns. The white fish, you eat people, not people there, just simply make omelets of the white white bait, not white fish, white bait. Sorry, it's a very small fish. It's like uh, in Malaysia, in Singapore, it's called ikan bilis. It's something like that. It's white bait. So they just simply uh, make omelets with it. There's white prawn. White prawn, you just um, blanch it, and then uh, you peel on. You peel and eat the prawns. The prawns is small, about this size, um, very sweet, but the shells are shell is a bit hard. Then there's the white fish. When you go to Jiangsu, right? There'll be so many fish dishes that, that they will that they will feed you. This white fish from Taihu Lake is uh, big. Um, simply, simply steam with a bit of soy sauce and a bit of oil. The meat is very sweet, very tender and delicate. Um, but just, just be careful. This is a lot of small little bones, quite, quite, quite spiny little bones. And uh, be 
careful. Finally, um, I want to tell you about Wen Si Tofu. Now, um, I said before that, so the in Jiangsu, right, one of the important criteria is the cutting skills. Now, so this Wen Si Tofu is a very, very simple dish. It's just a, a piece of tofu, uh, any ordinary white tofu. But what makes it extraordinary is the chopping. Chef, you need at least five years of training to do this. Chop, 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 chop. You will cut it into five to ten thousand strands and then they will be made into a little puffy puffy ball you know like a like a blossom like a flower you put it into simmer it in chicken soup and then uh, i guess uh, when you taste it right it's ordinary tofu in, in the chicken soup but because of the way it is cut it looks different and it tastes different it feels different it's such a iconic and memorable dish from Jiangsu. So when you go to Jiangsu, this is one of the dishes you must look for. So there you are, I briefly share with you uh, Jiangsu cuisine, um, the geography of Jiangsu, the characteristic of Jiangsu dishes, which is uh, emphasis on natural ingredients, natural taste, simple cooking, simmering, steaming, stewing, and the emphasis on chopping skills. Now I I I, yeah, I really miss Jiangsu and really hope to go back as soon as possible. There are so many other dishes I want to try. I just shared with you only a small small amount. There are many many more. So let's go to Jiangsu together and enjoy the beauty of Jiangsu. It is so rich in history. The the architecture is wonderful. The natural beauty is breathtaking and the food is absolutely delicious. One of the greatest four of Chinese cuisine. Let's go Jiangsu. Happy New Year and goodbye. See you again soon.